In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, welcome to the celebration of the fifth Sunday of Easter. It is the day of resurrection and our celebration of Christ's victory over death and the giver of life. And it is something that we rejoice in. Uh, this weekend we remember Mother's Day, and it is a special joy to remember our mothers, the living and the deceased, and we offer these masses with them in mind, and we give thanks to God for His grace through them. I would like to invite you to join in, through, in the mystery of this Eucharist, calling to mind the great mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to the life we desire. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the truth that keeps us on the right path. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the life for which we long. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, We do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. 
believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen. Amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Was Jesus a mommy? No, he was not a mommy. Well, was he a daddy? Nope, he wasn't a daddy. Was he a grandparent? Nope, he was not a grandparent. Was he a musician? We don't think so. An architect, an astronaut. Jesus was none of these. He was a man, the Son of God, born in a country we call Israel. He never traveled probably more than a hundred miles from where he was born. He could only be in one place at a time, just like you and I. We don't know what he did the first 30 years Exactly, but we know the last three years of his public ministry. He did powerful work, miracles, and he rose from the dead. That's pretty powerful. But like all of us, he was limited to a time, a place. He says to his disciples, if you believe in me, you will do the works that I do and greater ones than these. Frankly, I don't know anybody that's done greater work than Jesus. I think of the lives of the saints as powerful and good as they were, as instruments of God, but I don't remember them doing anything greater than what I hear in the Gospels that Jesus did. So what's he talking about? How can they do greater works than he? He says, because I go to the Father. And because he goes to the Father, they send the Holy Spirit. The Father and Son, the Holy Spirit proceeds from them upon the earth into our lives and empowers us that we might do the work of God just as Jesus who received the Holy Spirit who the Holy Spirit came upon him and he did great works and the works we do are only greater because there are many disciples all around the world this mass is being offered around the world which is greater than what Jesus could do since he could only be at one place at one time because when he goes to the Father now through the Holy Spirit he is present not just for three years on the earth But until the end of time, through every century till the end of the world, it is in that way that we will do greater works than than the ones Jesus did. And so we need to think about how we are doing that work of God, how we are doing the works of God that Jesus empowers us to do as a mommy, 
as a daddy, as a grandparent, and whatever gifts the whole, that you've been given, how are you and I continuing the work of Christ and making them even greater for the salvation of the world, the healing of those who are, are in need of God's healing grace and forgiveness and joy. So let's look for those ways. And as we celebrate Mother's Day, uh, think about our mother. Some of our mothers are with the Lord. Let's remember them and cherish them. Grandmothers, adoptive mothers, there's all kinds of mothers uh, who, who have been instruments of God's grace. And if you are blessed to still have your mother, make sure you tell her that you love her and that you are grateful for her because she is doing the work of God. Let's profess our faith in, in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, let us pray for the church's work in the world, making peace, living justly, and serving the most vulnerable. For the church, for those who minister to the poor, visit the sick and imprisoned, for all staff members who strive to fulfill the needs of our parishioners, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders in health care and governance, that at this time of great danger for all of us, they may make the right decisions for the well-being of the people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for all mothers, that we, their children, may honor them always with a spirit of profound love, respect, and thanksgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will turn readily to Mary, the mother of God in times of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those people throughout the world who are suffering from the COVID-19, and particularly those in intensive care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mass intention today, the people of the parish, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> for our deceased relatives and friends, and for those who have died this week, that they may dwell forever in the house of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, you are our comforter and hope. Hear our prayers which we bring before you. Strengthen us in this time of need. Give us hope of a brighter future. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. O God, who by this wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice the offering of our lives to you and the offering of your life to us have made us partakers in the one supreme Godhead grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord the Lord be with you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and people exalts in your praise, the heavenly host and angels Sing together with the unending hymn of your glory as they
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, <clears throat> and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, with Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you rose from the dead and you found your apostles afraid, grieving, locked in the upper room. And you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but Look upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. Let's offer to those nearest us a sign of his peace.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you've imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. I'll be offering a, a Mother's Day blessing uh, after the uh, announcements. Um, the, um, this is the last week of school, and I want to praise our children for the hard work they've been doing. And I know that they have persevered in these difficult times. It's been a lot of change. And I know that that has uh, challenged you to in your uh, schoolwork. But I want to praise you for your perseverance and get through this week. And there'll be a nice uh, opportunity uh, for uh, summertime to uh, be celebrated. I also admire your parents and the teachers. I know that they have worked probably as hard as you have to help you and to oversee uh, your completion of the school year. So Father Min and Father Joe and I talk about this periodically, noting how dedicated uh, we know parents and uh, the teachers are in helping our school children. So uh, I congratulate you all as, as you conclude this year. You know, so far, our community, local community, has been spared many of the uh, critically ill or fatal cases of the virus. I am aware of more people uh, testing positive. Many of them are asymptomatic. But that, you know, causes us to be concerned, obviously, because we know that they can spread it to uh, those who aren't, uh, who are susceptible to the symptoms. So um, we've been blessed, but we also know that um, we're not in the clear. Uh, being isolated in our homes has many difficulties to it, uh, but the Opening up of businesses and churches, which are occurring, will also call for us to be um, to meet the difficulties and challenges. We're going to have to be. It's going to be uncomfortable. Say, for example, wearing a mask, um, not shaking hands, or uh, staying a safe distance. But this challenge is something we do in service of the love Christ has for protecting one another from a disease. I know our parish staff is working diligently uh, to prepare to open up church, just as our school faculty and staff have worked so hard to keep the school year going for our children. So I think if we follow the basic rules uh, we're going to continue to save lives and uh, prevent a lot of heartache. I know in our bulletin we have uh, St. Joseph Back to School registration. So yes, we're preparing for this fall already, and we want to encourage you to um, be prepared to come back. So summertime doesn't last forever. <laughs> Um, I've kept uh, a number of mothers in mind in our bulletin. We've got some beautiful things. If you go on our website and get to the bulletin, there's some beautiful uh, things for our mothers there, and as well as people remembering their mothers. I'd like to now offer a blessing for, um, for all our mothers, and then I'd like to dedicate uh, the song uh, on this day to the mother of the church. So I'd like if you are close to a, your mother or grandmother even, if they're in the house with you, I'd like for you to just put your hand on their shoulder or something, let them feel that, you know, this blessing is for them. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, 
so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and their love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now to the mother of the church, the mother of Jesus. On this day, O oh beautiful mother, on this day we give thee our love. Near thee, Madonna, fondly we hover, trusting thy gentle care to prove. On this day we ask to share, dearest mother, thy sweet care. Aid us ere our feet astray, guide us in thy loving way. On this day, O oh beautiful Mother, on this day we give thee our love. Near thee, Madonna, fondly we hover, trusting thy gentle care to prove. Let's call upon the intercession of Mary now. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and be with you forever. I do want to mention, I don't want to forget this, to say that next weekend we'll give you more details about how we're going to open up the church for Mass and how you can sign up and we can get people in safely and out. So next weekend we're anticipating, uh, we're, we're working hard to be ready. So we can't wait for you to come home to the church. <laughs>